Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. Thank you so much for joining me on this Wednesday morning for a hot cup of coffee and a hot cup of the Word of God. Vayira is our Torah portion for this week, and our Aliyah for today is Exodus chapter 7, verse 8, all the way to chapter 8, verse 6. But we're going to be hanging out in chapter 7, and I want to begin with verse 8. So it says, Adonai told Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Prove yourself with a miracle. Then you are to say to Aaron, Take your staff, cast it down before Pharaoh, so that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and did, as Adonai had commanded, and Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called for his wise men and the sorcerers, and they too, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. For each man threw down his staff, and they became serpents, and Aaron's staff swallowed up their staves. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. Now, the Hebrew is a very interesting language. According to the rabbis and sages, when these staves turned into snakes and started writhing and wrestling on the ground and trying to cannibalize each other, and it says that Aaron's staff swallowed up the Egyptian staves, what they believe happened is that when Aaron's staff that turned into a serpent began to devour the other staves that had turned into serpents, that it reverted back to its state as a staff. And that is where the miracle was. Not necessarily the miracle being that the staff turned into a serpent, but that the staff as a serpent turned back into a staff and in the form of a staff swallowed up the other snakes. That's according to the rabbis and sages. Now that is a pretty spectacular feat. Now let's move on to verse, uh, uh, verse 19, read 19 through 21. Adonai said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt and over the rivers and over the streams, over the pools and over their ponds, so that they become blood. There will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in the wooden and stone containers. So Moses and Aaron did as Adonai had commanded, and he lifted up his staff and struck the water where uh, there in the river and in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and the water of the Nile turned to blood. When the fish that were in the river died, the river became so foul that the Egyptians could not drink the water from the river. The blood was throughout all the land of Egypt. So it's interesting. Why did Aaron strike the Nile and not Moses? Why did God tell Moses to tell Aaron to do this and not Moses himself? Usually it's Moses who's stretching out his staff and Moses is doing this and that. Well, according to the rabbis and sages, basically the principle of you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Moses was forbidden to strike the Nile and turn the Nile into blood because it was the Nile that protected Moses and it was the Nile that saved Moses' life. When Moses was an infant, and the Egyptians were out for baby blood and were killing all the Israelite children. His mother put him in a wicker basket that was sealed and put it in the bulrushes in the Nile, secured it within the, the reeds in the Nile so that it wouldn't float off or go anywhere. And it stayed hidden until the princess of Egypt found the baby, had compassion, and adopted the baby as her own and saved Moses from a horrible fate. And he grew up as a prince of Egypt and eventually the, the liberator of his people. And so because of the protection that the Nile provided Moses, Moses was forbidden to be the one to strike the Nile. Aaron didn't have a relationship with the Nile like Moses did. So it was totally okay for Aaron to strike the Nile and turn the Nile into blood. So the lesson that we walk away from this devotional is always have appreciation for those who help you or serve you in some way. There's a story of a rabbi who when his shoes wore out, most people would take their shoes and just throw them in the garbage. But not this rabbi. This rabbi took his shoes, had holes in it, was scuffed up, was worn out, definitely time for new shoes. He gently wrapped it in newspaper, put it back in the shoe box and buried it. Somebody says, well, why the heck are you doing that? He says, these shoes, have served me so well as I serve the Lord. How could I just throw them away? I've got to show them some sort of respect for carrying me through so many years. 
I mean, eh, maybe the rabbi went a little too far with an inanimate object, but I think his, his, his sentiment and his premise is well worth noting and imitating, is that we don't bite the hand that feeds us, that when somebody shows us kindness or some sort of help, that we should always be ever so grateful. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.